Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I created this freeze frame effect. Now, the difference between this one and a lot of other freeze frames examples out there is that in this one, the frozen subjects actually go out of the shot as the camera pans. And this is a little trickier than if it were a simple static camera with no movement. This tutorial is going to involve using the warp stabilizer, tracking in mocha, and rotoscoping. I'm not going to go into huge amounts of details when talking uh, about these as there are plenty of tutorials out there that can help with these individual tools. But it will be a decent overview on how to create this effect. So let's start with the raw footage here in After Effects. This is straight from my GoPro Hero 3 shot at 1080p at 60 frames per second. I'll need to interpret this footage to my final frame rate of 29.97 frames per second. Notice that this clip doesn't have a lot going on behind the subject. The plainer the background is, the easier it is to create this effect. First, I'll select my in and out points uh, by pressing B for my in point uh, just before he comes into the shot. And then N for my end point just after he leaves the shot. Now I can right click on the work area and select trim comp to work area. This now leaves me with the area I want to work with. Now I need to track the motion of this scene. So I'll be using Mocha to do this, which is bundled free with After Effects CS5 and 6. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly render out this work area so I can import it into Mocha. Now I can open up Mocha, uh, create a new project and import the file which I just rendered out. Mocha's worked out everything here, so we could just click OK. And here is my imported footage. As I need to track this footage, I need an area that's going to be on screen the whole time. And this lamppost here seems to be the ideal thing, as it stays on the screen the whole time. Now I'll select the spline tool and add some points. And then right click to end the spline. Now I am aware that my subject will end up going in front of where I'm tracking, but I'll click the track forward button. And as the subject approaches this region, I'm going to click the stop button and simply move the spline out of the way of the subject so we can still do a decent track. And I'll analyze forward again. Uh, but again, I need to kind of just move the spline a bit out of the way. Uh, track forward. And that seems pretty good. I'll certainly do for what we want to achieve here. So now we can click the export tracking data and copy that to the clipboard. Now we can close that and bring back After Effects. And we want to create a new null object. And this null object is going to be our tracker, so rename that. Drill down to its position. Make sure the timer's on the first frame, and then paste the tracking data into the position. Now, scrubbing through this footage, we can see that it's done a pretty decent job of tracking. Now that the track is in place, we can hide it. We'll be attaching our frozen subjects to this track shortly. Next, let's decide where we want our subject to freeze. You may want to do this to beats in a song, but for this example, let's do them 30 frames apart. So first of all, I'll add some markers by hitting the asterisk key and move forward 30 frames, uh, hit the asterisk key again, for another marker, another 30 frames, 
and the asterisk again. By the way, I moved 30 frames at a time by holding down the shift key and pressing the page down key three times. Page down by itself moves one frame forward and holding down shift makes it moves 10 frames at a time. Page up does the same, but in the opposite direction. Anyway, so let's freeze the subject. So to do this, we're gonna duplicate our original footage, move to the first marker. I can snap to this marker by moving the timer line and holding down shift and select Alt open square bracket. Now right click on this footage and choose time freeze frame. Now we can see what this has achieved. Let's do the same for the other two freeze frames. Remember to take the original footage each time. I'll now quickly rename these to freeze one, two and three. And now with the timer on the first frame of the first freeze subject, I can parent the tracker to it. Now we can see that it's attached itself to the tracker. It's fairly jerky, but um, we'll be able to sort that out. If we lower the opacity down to 50%, uh, we can see, uh, you know, the beginnings of this effect coming together. I'll now parent the tracker to the other bits of freeze footage, uh, remembering to be on the first frame each time that I do it. Now, as the track is a bit bumpy, uh, what I want to do is I want to stabilize the footage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all the other bits of footage uh, so it just leaves me with uh, freeze one. And I'm going to hit B to uh, trim the work area down to just this bit of footage, as I want to render this out to then be stabilized and rotoscoped. So I'll render this now. And I want to bring this new footage back into my project. And I can bring it into the timeline and replace where my previous bit of footage was, so I can uh, hide that. So I want to pre-compose this bit of footage. I can leave all the attributes and call this stable. Now I'll select the footage and apply the warp stabilizer. Let that do its work. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job. In regards to the framing, all we need to choose is stabilize only, as we'll be removing all the background from the subject anyway. Now back in the main composition, if uh, we lower it down to 50%, We can see that it's pretty smooth now. Pop that back up to 100% and what we want to do is rotoscope around our rollerblader uh, to remove all the background. So double click that layer, uh, choose the roto brush. and start painting around the subject. After Effects does a pretty decent job of knowing the outline of the subject, and the more frames you do, the more that it learns. So basically on the outside of the pink line, the footage will be removed and will be left with just the subject. I'll just speed this process up. And once I'm happy with the rotoscoping, I'll freeze the roto brush. And that's frozen. So when I go back to my composition, 
I can see that it's done a pretty good job. I may want to refine the mask by adjusting some of the settings. And now if we zoom in here, I can see that uh, our new footage is slightly uh, out of position for the first frame. This would be due to the stabilization. Uh, so simply just by using the arrow keys with this layer selected, uh, we can just reposition. Now, to keep the roller blader on the same track, um, I'm going to have to make some slight movements and adjustments. So what I want to do is I want to add some keyframes of the position to keep him on the right level in terms of the line that he's, he's sliding along. So I'll work my way through this bit of footage and uh, move him up or down depending on, on where he needs to be. The track did a good job to get us this far, but obviously the changing perspective of the camera angle, we need to adjust slightly for that. So pretty happy with that. Now we want to make our subject kind of appear from nothing. Uh, so a nice uh, fade would be good. So simply animate some opacity. And if we go to effects and choose fast blur, we can also blur our subject in as well. Okay, and here is our subject fading in. So I need to do the same process to the other two freeze frames that I'm using. Uh, so I'm going to speed it up now. So first here I'm rendering out the footage for each one. Now bringing them back in. Pre-composing. Stabilizing. And rotoscoping the subject. going back into the composition and lining it up. Here I'm having to rotate slightly as well and moving forward but then readjusting along the line. And add keyframes as I go just to keep the rollerblader on the same line. And here's the third freeze frame. Stabilize the footage. Rotoscope the footage. Notice that I'm including the shadows as well. Freeze the rotoscope. Reposition. and add some keyframes for position and rotation just to keep them on the right track. I also apply the opacity and the blurring in for each of the subjects as well. So with all those done, I can now remove my old bits of footage that I didn't need and the tracker and a quick RAM preview, you can see what has been achieved.
So now we want to create our final composition with our final output settings. We can drag in our composition, trim down the work area. And what I want to do now is add some black bars on the top and the bottom. So I'll do that by creating a new solid, aligning it to the top and to the bottom. This allows me to reframe my composition. Now I'll apply some quick and easy color correction. Magic Bullet Looks can help me out a fair amount with this. And I'll do a quick curves. And I'll also add an optical flare just to glow the left hand side of the scene. So I'll increase the brightness of the flare and move the glare out of the way. And there we have it. Now I can render this out. And we can see the final effect. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any comments or suggestions, please put them in the comments below. For more videos and tutorials, please subscribe.